This is the ICS 321 uh, screencast on how to get started on your assignment 1. Basically, how do you import the code into your NetBeans IDE. So I've downloaded the zip file with the code. It's in this directory. And I've unzipped it. Uh, and the directory structure looks pretty much like uh, this. So the uh, most of the source code is in here and most of the testing code is in here all right so if you you know, just kind of do this you see all the code there and for this one the your source code they're all there okay so these are you need to know where you unzip your file uh, for me this is where it is and I'm just gonna close this window and just uh, let you look at the NetBeans thing so what you want to do is you want to uh, uh, you want to do a new project on um, just click on new project and there are several options uh, what we like to do is Java project with existing sources okay click next and here I'm going to name it ICS 321A1 uh, you can choose this as your projects folder or you can you can choose wherever you download it as your project folder that that also works so I'm going to just kind of go to um, I'm sorry uh, I'm going to go to where I have all my projects I see 321 2015 I'm going to make this the project folder okay and click next uh, you need to tell them where to find your source packages and this is where I have my application source right um, turns out it doesn't matter whether you click this one or this one they will still go to source okay then your test packages so I'm uh, I'm doing I'm gonna go up one uh, this is where my test packages are okay and I'll be using JUnit 4 um, let's click next and see if there's anything else includes. I've got nothing special, so I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to click um, finish. Okay, so give NetBeans a few seconds to process all that. And uh, my computer is kind of slow. Okay, we're, we're getting there. So here there are some dependencies uh, and you NetBeans will help you resolve this. So if you click resolve problems, um, what you want is to resolve the JUnit 4. Okay, so resolve this. And you will go ahead and actually uh, install the plugins. And what you want is you want JUnit 4. And click on I accept terms and agreements or what happened here. Click on install. Okay, this may take a while. And it's finished installing it. So I think we're good now. Okay, so you can click and look at your test uh, source packages, your test packages. And if you click here and you see that um, whenever you see this red exclamation mark, it means there's a problem. And we can look at that. And you can double click on driver.java. And you, uh, we realize that uh, there's a reference to database reader. And the database reader, reader class is not in uh, your source. Okay, so this is a class that you have to create yourself. All right, and uh, I'm going to very quickly show you how you can do that. You click on this, just create database reader class in package IC321. That's the one you want. Okay. And um, the database reader class is going to actually implement the database search of Java. If you look at this file, this is pretty much an abstract class, right? And this is, um, and you have to write the code for that. So again, going back to this, we want to put implement 
uh, database search. Okay. Now you see again this exclamation mark. If you click on that, implement all abstract methods. So you can do that to make it generate code for you. And right now, uh, in each method, because you haven't written any code, it, it, by default it puts in this uh, throw new unsupported operation exception. So you will have to uh, comment this out and write your own code there. After that, then things should run. Okay, I'm going to save. I, uh, for me, it would be Command S, and then you see that for the driver file, the, uh, the exclamation mark is gone. At this point, you can actually compile. Um, uh, before you do that, let's go to the project again and click on Properties. All right. um, so building-wise, you're okay, but in the run, uh, the main class that you want is this, right? Arguments, you do want arguments. In fact, the uh, let's put the working directory first. The working directory is going to be this, okay, which is correct. And um, we are going to supply a command file as the argument. So we have provided several command files as examples. And you can now just put commands.txt. Okay. And you can hit OK. And by the way, just to let you look at uh, where the command files are. 21, 21. So we have command files, database files. Database files, that's where the data, sample data that um, I have provided you. Um, oh, why do I have a copy there? That's strange. Okay, and uh, if you look at the command files, that's the commands I've given you. So uh, the program, okay, you should read through the program. The program is going to take as input a command file, and the command file will give you, um, it's a list of commands that you're asking the program to run. Okay, the first, first command, the, I'm sorry, the first command is always a load data command. So here I'm loading from database file the order small table. And subsequent commands are actually search commands. So naive search equal will say I'm search for all rows where the uh, where the where the third column uh, is equals to uh, has a value uh, f. Okay, you can read about those in the code. Alright, but at this point you can actually compile. And where is my compile button? Um, I think I've made this too small. Made this windows too small over here. So I can actually compile it and run. It's going to throw an exception because it's going to hit this naive load and it's going to um, uh, it's going to throw an exception. Okay, so now it's compiling and it's running. And it says it's going to hit an uh, exception here, uh, which is normal. So what you what if you get rid of the exception, what you do is comment out the throw new, unsupported operation, etc. For example, put in put in a system print line, print something that you that you would like to see, and do a return true. And uh, this particular exception will go, but another exception for one of these other methods will will then um, pop up. Okay, but if you just again, if you start putting code into database reader, then uh, everything should work. All right. So hopefully this helps you get started.